So, is Pappy Van Winkle the same as Weller's? Buffalo Trace makes a bunch of different whiskeys, but they only have four mash bills. So we are going to do the Buffalo Trace mash bill analysis, so stick around. First off, I want to send a special shout out to Ryan K.O. Sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Ryan was the person that gave me the idea for this episode because he was saying there's all these different distilleries that make a bunch of different whiskeys and sometimes they're made from the same juice and how do we know what the difference is? And so I decided that today we're going to go through Buffalo Trace's mash bills and we're going to talk about every whiskey they make. Now, what you need to know about different distilleries releasing different SKUs or different brands from the same mash bills is that for the most part, everything is exactly the same except for the age of the whiskey, the proof of the whiskey, and the barrel selection process. And occasionally there are products that are single barrels. And so one of the big debates in the whiskey world is, is the barrel selection process enough to distinguish between a barrel that should be put in this bottle or a barrel that should be put in that bottle. And I think that there's something to that. I think that over time they start to develop an understanding of the different aging environments that they have in their different warehouses and which, which warehouses are more likely to produce a flavor that's in alignment with a particular brand. So let's get started. The first thing that we're gonna talk about is Buffalo Trace Mash Bill One. So Buffalo Trace has two rye-based mash bills. They have one uh, weeded bourbon, and then they have their rye-based mash bill. So Buffalo Trace mash bill one is rumored to be around 10% rye in the mash bill. Buffalo Trace is very, you know, holds their cards close to the chest with regard to what their mash bill is. It's one of the last distilleries that we don't have a for sure answer. Most people say it's 10 to 12% for mash bill one. And with that mash bill, they are able to make Buffalo Trace, Old Charter, E.H. Taylor, Eagle Rare, George T. Stagg, and Benchmark. So let's start off with Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace is a non-age stated product, uh, but it's rumored to be six to eight years old. But because it's non-age stated, and that means that it could be as low as four, but I'm pretty sure it's in that six to eight year range. It is a 90 proof whiskey, and the MSRP for that is $24.99. Now, we're gonna start to realize that there's a lot of similarities between these different products, but like I said, there's just slight tweaks in the age, the proof, and the next one that's up is called Old Charter. Now, Old Charter is super interesting because Old Charter used to be an age stated product and they had an eight year old product and they had a 10 year old product. And back in 2014, they dropped the age statement, but they left the number eight on the uh, Necker the way that they had it before where it said aged eight years. And there's actually been a class action lawsuit uh, against Buffalo Trace for deceptive trade practices because people see that and they assume that it's an eight-year-old whiskey. And it still says on the back label that it's aged for eight seasons. Um, but that's probably inaccurate because when the 10-year whiskey was out, they would say that it was aged for 10 seasons, still indicating four years. At its price point, um, it's likely only aged four years. It's a non-age dated product, so there's nowhere on the label it says how old it's aged, but it is a straight whiskey. Um, and when you have a whiskey product in the United States, it's got to be at least four years unless it's age dated. It is an 80 proof product, and its MSRP is all the way down to $10.49 in our market. So you're talking about ultra value play, Couple years younger than Buffalo Trace, a little bit lower proof point, uh, but at $10.49, how could you complain? Next up, Buffalo Trace Mash Bill 1 is E.H. Taylor. They have the small batch, the single barrel, and the barrel proof. All are rumored to be six to eight years old, so again, similar to that Buffalo Trace age, but the proof's a little bit higher, so the cost is a little bit higher because more of what's going into the bottle 
uh, is not just water, right? So uh, the proof for the small batch and the single barrel are 100 proof because they're bottled and bond products. And the barrel proof is obviously whatever it comes out of the barrel at. MSRP for the small batch is $49.99. The single barrel is $59.99 and the barrel proof is $79.99. And that's basically because there's no water that they're selling to you. Water costs them almost nothing to add into the bottle to proof it down. Um, and there's also a little bit of a premium because it is a barrel proof product. The next product that comes from Buffalo Trace Mashable One is Eagle Rare. There are two different versions of Eagle Rare. There's Eagle Rare that is just their regular small batch product. Uh, although I don't know that it says small batch on the label, uh, but it is a batch product. It's not a single barrel. And then they have the Eagle Rare 17 year that's part of the Buffalo Trace Antique collection. The regular Eagle Rare is age stated on the back label is 10 years. At one point, they were gonna, they had the age statement on the front label. They pulled it off the front label, put it on the back, probably in anticipation of making it a non-age stated product. But so far, they've been able to maintain it. Of course, the 17 year is 17 years old. The regular Eagle Rare is a 90 proof product. And back a few years ago, the Eagle Rare 17 was also 90 proof, but people complained and they've raised it to 101. The MSRP for Eagle Rare is $29.99, and the MSRP for the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection version that's 17 years old is $119.99. So we're starting to see some patterns here. It's the same juice, but when you put that extra age, you have more evaporative loss. You don't add the water before the bottling and things like that. You start to see the price going up. Hey, nice hat. Hey, thanks. Nice lanyard. Nice rocks glass. Thanks, man. <laughs> nice travel case. Nice blend topper. Thank you. Nice candle. Nice bottle bag. Thanks, man. That's a nice tumbler. Nice woman's t-shirt. Oh, thanks. Nice uh, extra schmedium shirt. The next thing that's made out of Buffalo Trace Mashable One is Stag. So you've got Stag, previously Stag Jr., and now also George T. Stag, hopefully coming back next year because they didn't bottle one last year. And the difference in age for those guys is the Stag is typically eight to nine years old, so a little bit older than E.H. Taylor. And the George T. Stag is has been 15-year-old juice for the last few years, but some years as high as 19. So again, looking at that same equation, when they've got juice that's been aging for a long time, the price is gonna be higher. If you add less water, the price is gonna be higher. Both of those products are barrel proof and the MSRP for the Stag is $59.99. The MSRP for the George T Stag would be $119.99. That's where most of the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection sets. The last product of the Buffalo Trace Mash Bill 1 that we're gonna talk about is Benchmark. You've got number eight, you have top floor, you have small batch, you have single barrel, you have bonded, and you have full proof. So pretty wide lineup. And what we're gonna see is that this is a play to be able to sell this Buffalo Trace Mash Bill 1 juice at a lower price point at higher volumes because they're able to reproduce it much faster. If you wanna make more George C. Stag at 15 years, you had to have done some planning a long time ago. You can plan ahead three years and make more of this. So the number eight, they say is three years old. It is non-age stated. Um, and so I, it, it can't be a straight uh, bourbon and be non-age, well, it can't be a whiskey at all and be non-age stated and not be at least four years old. But the rumor is that it's three. So I'm not sure whether or not there's an age statement on the back label or not. In the order that we've shared, the number eight is 80 proof, the top floor is 86, the small batch is 90, the single barrel is 95, the bonded is 100, and the full proof is 125, which is the proof that it goes into the barrel. Your pricing for the number eight is 9.99, the top floor is 13.99, the small batch is 15.99, the single barrel is 23.49, 
The bonded is 1899 and the full proof is 2199. So some value plays there, single barrel being a little bit more expensive because from a manufacturing standpoint, bottling a single barrel is a pain in the butt. Uh, you have to use different distillery equipment and it's more manual labor. So price is a little bit higher on that. Buffalo Trace Mash Bill 2. So Buffalo Trace Mash Bill 2 is just slightly higher rye content. Again, they're kind of close to the chest with it, but most people say that it's between 12 and 15% rye. And that one for me, I get a little bit more of a tropical fruit flavor, maybe some um, pineapple and uh, something that's akin to peaches. Uh, with Buffalo Trace Mash Bill 2, they make Ancient Age, Elmer T. Lee, Rock Hill Farms, Hancock's, Blanton's, and Bowman? So Bowman Brothers is out of Virginia. They have been in the past buying the distillate that could have gone into a Blanton's bottle, taking it to Virginia, running it through their pot still, and aging it in Virginia and calling it Virginia whiskey. And the rumor is that they are starting to use their own distillate. But for most of what you can find on the shelves now, it is basically something that could have been made into a Blanton's, but it's been distilled an extra time and aged in a different area. So let's talk about Ancient Age. Ancient Age is a three-year product. Uh, this was another one where I couldn't see whether or not it was age stated on the back, back label, but virtually everything says it's three years. And again, if it's whiskey in the United States, it has to be aged at least four years or it has to be age stated. It is only 80 proof and the MSRP is only $10.99. So this is a pretty similar product to the next one on the list, the Elmer T. Lee. But Elmer T. Lee is a single barrel. So again, you got that higher manufacturing cost. You got more variability of flavor because they're not maxing, they're not mixing batches to try and maintain a consistent flavor. Um, Elmer T. Lee is non-age stated, but it is assumed to be a five to seven year old product. And the proof is a little bit higher than the ancient age. It is 90 proof and it's a pretty good product. It's become popular. Um, Elmer was one of the only master distillers to have a brand that was in his own name while he was alive. And in recent years, the, the product has become so popular, it's, it's very difficult to find. It used to be only, you know, 30 something bucks and people enjoyed it for the sipper that it was and now it's pretty difficult to find. But for 90 proof, given that it's a single barrel, they've raised the price up to $39.99. If you can find it at retail, it's probably a still solid buy, uh, but I'm not sure I'd be paying the secondary prices for it. Next up, Buffalo Trace Mash Bill 2 is Rock Hill Farms also a single barrel product, also non-age stated, but rumored to be a little bit older at eight years. It is a 100 proof product and the MSRP on that is $59.99. It is a beautiful bottle. Um, I, it, it, what's interesting is when you go to the Buffalo Trace website, you don't see um, that product listed as one of the products that they produce but when you go to the Sazerac website, you actually do see it, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, next up from Buffalo Trace Mash Bill 2 is Hancock's, which again is a single barrel. So we see kind of a theme here. Buffalo Trace is making a lot of single barrels out of Mash Bill 2. It is a non-age stated product, but it is rumored to be a little bit younger than the others at four to five years old. And the proof's a little bit low and at a weird percentage. It's at 88.9 proof. The MSRP on this is at 49.99. So at that proof point of the younger age, this is one that's probably lower on the value scale. Um, but as you can see behind me, I typically have a bottle on hand because it's one that people want to try. And it's actually pretty tasty whiskey. I'm not mad at it at 49.99. Uh, the last and probably the most popular of Buffalo Trace Mash Bill 2 would be Blanton's. Uh, Blanton's is non-age stated, but it's rumored to be six years old. It's in such high demand that they supposedly pull the barrels the moment that they turn six. Blanton's is a little bit different because all the barrels spend at least some time in Warehouse H, which is not brick building. It is an ironclad building, so things age faster. 
The single barrel, which is what most of us are used to in the United States, is 93 proof, and the MSRP for that is $59.99. But as a result of the uh, tariffs that Trump had put in place, it made it so that there was less foreign demand and Buffalo Trace started to sell products that were previously only available in other countries in the United States like Blanton's Gold and Straight From The Barrel. So let's skip over to the next mash bill and that's Buffalo Trace Weeded Bourbon. Again, play it close to the chest. They don't exactly say how much wheat is in there as opposed to uh, the corn and malted barley, uh, but we know that it doesn't have rye in it. And this is the product that they use to make Weller and the Van Winkle line of bourbons. And that's where kind of the impetus for this video started because there was a time that people were trying to find Pappy Van Winkle or Old Rip Van Winkle or Lot B and they couldn't. And people started going, well, wait a minute. Um, back then, uh, Weller Antique was a 10 year age dated product and was the same proof point as Old Rip Van Winkle. And Lot B and Weller 12 were virtually the same except for 0.4 proof points. But the Weller product has Weller Special Reserve, they have Weller Antique, they have Weller 12 year, they have a product called CYPB, which is called Choose Your Perfect Bourbon. And in that situation, they crowdsourced information to put together a blend that was supposed to be the very best of what everybody wanted. They make one with an orange label that is a single barrel. And then of course, there's my favorite, the William LaRue Weller. And those are all part of the Weller line. So the special reserve is rumored to be four to seven years. So it's a little bit cheaper, so to get as much age. The antique is rumored to be six to eight years now that they dropped the age statement. The 12 is 12. The <clears throat> single barrel is eight. The full proof is supposed to be six to eight. And the William Lou Ruweller is around 12 years. The proofs on these, the special reserves 90, the antiques 107. The 12 year is also 90. The CYPB is 95. The single barrel is 97. And the full proof is 100. 25. The MSRP for those are $23.99 for the younger, lower proof product, $56.99 for the antique, $39.99 for the 12 year because they get to add the water, $57.99 for the CYPB, $59.99 for the single barrel, $59.99 for the full proof, and $119.99 for William LaRue Weller. Next up, we have the Van Winkle line. Van Winkle has Old Rip Van Winkle 10 year, Lot B 12 year, Pappy Van Winkle 15, 20, and 23. The proofs on those for the Old Rip would be 107, the Lot B 12 year at 90.4, the Pappy Van Winkle 15 at 107, the Pappy Van Winkle 20 at 90.4, and the Pappy 23 at 95.6. So what's interesting about that is before OW or before Weller Antique dropped their age statement, um, they were the same age and proof as the Van Winkle equivalent. And as mentioned, so were the Weller 12s, uh, with the exception of the 0.4% proof difference. Uh, for the Van Winkle line, their MSRPs, although this is comical because you'll probably never find these bottles at this price. The old Rip Van Winkle is $79.99. The Lot B is $99.99. The Pappy Van Winkle 15 is $119.99. The 20 is $199.99. And the 23 is $299.99. So last up, we have the fourth mash bill, which is their rye whiskey. Uh, all this means is that instead of being a majority of corn in the mash bill, the majority of the grain is rye. Unfortunately, they, again, don't disclose what the percentages are like a lot of other distilleries do. But they use that rye mash, mash bill to make a handful of products. They make uh, the Sazerac rye, they make E.H. Taylor rye, they make Sazerac 18 year rye, and they make Van Winkle Family Reserve rye, all from the same mash bill. So the Sazerac rye is rumored to be aged six to eight years. Again, non-age dated products. We don't know for sure how old it is, uh, but six to eight, it is 90 proof and all the way down at 29.99. 
which is a relative value for rye. If you don't know this, rye is very difficult to produce. It has uh, this characteristic where it kind of gums up during the fermentation process. It takes longer to clean your distillery equipment. You have to use special enzymes to keep it from bubbling over. It's a big pain in the butt. So anything that's aged that long, even at that proof at $29.99 is relative value. The next thing that they make out of it is E.H. Taylor rye, which is slightly older at nine years old. But because E.H. Taylor was involved in the creation of the Bottled and Bond Act, uh, most of the E.H. Taylor product, products are bottled and bond and are therefore 100 proof. And the E.H. Taylor rye is $79.99 in cost. Um, so you're seeing a little bit of a price jump to go from that Sazerac rye to the to the E.H. Taylor and not 100% sure it's justified given the difference in proof and age. Uh, the next product that's made from that rye mash bill is Sazerac 18. So obviously it's an 18 year old product and it's all the way down at 90 proof, which is pretty low. But when you're making an 18 year old product, you have a lot of evaporative loss and the water's gonna do two things for you. One, at 18 years, it's probably pretty woody in its flavor. It's gonna cut that back a little bit, but it's also gonna increase the number of bottles that you're able to produce, which is important. And I think because of that, they're able to keep it at a reasonable price point. Like most of the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, the MSRP is $119.99. Last up on the list for Sazerac Rye's mash bill would be the Van Winkle Family Reserve Rye. It is a 13 year old product and it is bottled at 95.6 proof. And it is at that same, uh, you know, Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, even though it's not part of that price point at $119.99. So that one would be an amazing value if you could get it. Me personally, it's probably had a little bit too much oak exposure. I've had some years that I really loved. I've got a bottle of the Sazerac 18 open. It's a little bit too oaky for me, but still very interesting. So let's talk a little bit about this show and why we do this. What is our philosophy? What are we all about? Well, Bourbon Real Talk is about bringing people together around spirits. And that's something that's important to me because in 2014, I lost a loved one to suicide. And in the aftermath of that, I was looking for ways to help people feel connected so they didn't have to feel alone the way that my brother did when he made that decision. And I started to become more involved in the whiskey enthusiast community just because of my passion. And I noticed that whiskey had a tendency to bring people together around the table that would maybe otherwise not have been friends because whiskey's very connective. And I thought, I want to use the connective power of whiskey to bring people together. And that's part of the reason why I started this podcast, because I figure if I get you connected to whiskey, the whiskey will do the rest of the job and get you connected to others. Um, along that path, though, I did learn that there's kind of a, you know, undesirable part of being involved in an online community, and that's the trolls. And the trolls like to use the platform that's been built by somebody other than themselves, typically, to benefit themselves and make themselves feel important and make other people feel small. And I saw trolls showing hate to a lot of people online that they didn't know. But that got me to thinking that if a troll can hate you online, even though they don't know you, there's nothing that stops me from loving you online, even though I don't really know you. And that's why I end every podcast the same way. And that's this. If you woke up this morning and you were unsure whether or not anyone loved you, just know that I love you. And I'll see you next time on Bourbon Real Talk. Yeah, so if you guys at home don't know, uh, in Texas, we have a little establishment called Torchy's Tacos. Woo! And they have what is arguably the best queso, uh, but they put Diablo sauce on it, which is habanero salsa. And whiskey, right after habanero salsa, may not be the best idea. A little bit of heartburn. A whiskey troll is a person who seeks negative attention and uses contrarian attitudes to derail civil discussion in online forums.
They communicate in ways they never would face to face because they're keyboard warriors. Their only goal is to make other people feel inferior. Hey guys, I'm new here. I just got my first blatant. And trust me, you probably paid way too much. I don't care much about the blends, but nice <laughs> There's no way that she didn't buy that at secondary, idiot. Oh, I know how you got that bottle. So, are you sick and tired of the whiskey trolls running your fun online? Well, that's why we started Bourbon Real Talk Community. Congratulations. Let me know what you think when you open it up. Hey, welcome to the group. Let me send you over a sample of Blanton's Gold and straight from the barrel. See how you like those. I remember back to my first bottle of Blanton's. It was the birthday to my son and we enjoy it every year on his birthday. Congrats. So if you're looking to connect with some people online who aren't head over to facebook.com and join Bourbon Real Talk community today.